Hi, this is Claire Paretzia from Berry Papery, and in this video I'm going to show you how I made these three cards featuring a watercolor Northern Lights-esque background. To save time, I'm going to make the background for all three cards at once. So I'm just taking a piece of watercolor cardstock that is four and a quarter by 11 inches. It's just a typical letter size uh, paper cut down in half uh, vertically. So I have this really long strip of watercolor cardstock and you definitely need watercolor cardstock for this project. Um, water is pretty essential <laughs> to this background. Um, I'm blending some chipped sapphire on the edge there. Um, you can see I had two ink pads. They were both really dry. So if you have any chipped sapphire, you will probably get a darker navy than I got. Um, I wish I could have made it darker, but I didn't have the supplies on hand. My bad. <laughs> So I topped off that chipped sapphire with some Mermaid Lagoon to make a little more bluey. And now I just have an, uh, a piece of acetate on the side that I'm uh, adding some distressing, so I'm just smushing it against there so I can use that basically as my palette. Now I'm adding plain water to um, the cardstock. First I added water to the bottom where there was no ink, and um, now I'm adding water to the top where the ink is. And I'm Using my, I'm making my brush strokes vertical because um, I've never seen the Northern Lights in person. That would be awesome, but I, I haven't. Um, so from pictures, uh, the lights, um, a lot of pictures that I've seen, the lights go up vertically and kind of these, it's kind of really cool stripey, blendy thing. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to try to attempt to recreate here. Um, which is why when I was um, adding those initial brush strokes with the blended ink, I um, had it kind of go in a stripey pattern. And that's also why um, I'm using so much water here because you can see I'm tilting the paper up so that the inks will uh, blend, will, will just kind of sink, will run down um, the paper and kind of create that vertical look and It'll be a little more organic than like just making the stripes with your paintbrush. But um, so that's how I decided to go about it. There's lots of different ways that you can make, you know, or you can paint the Northern Lights. Um, if you actually know how to do legit watercolor, you could make it look cooler than this. Um, this is just the way I decided to go about it. Um, so it, suit, it suited my purposes. So basically, um, you just, I mean, it's watercolor. You just uh, experiment with how much water you add, with the colors, the intensity of the colors. You can see that Mermaid Lagoon I'm adding there is really intense. So I'm using, I'm picking up more ink of the actual Mermaid Lagoon ink, and I don't have as much water on my brush. Um, versus if I want to get a little bit lighter here, I have more water on my brush when I add um, some more Mermaid Lagoon. So. Um, if you want more intensity, then don't use as much water um, or pick up a lot more uh, pigment if you were using actual watercolors, but you know, just the uh, Distress Ink ink <laughs> on the acetate, I guess. Um, and then just keep kind of adding the colors in here and there. Um, so the colors that I use for this are Mermaid Lagoon, Cracked Pistachio, Chipped Sapphire for that top that we blended in, um, Broken China, and Peacock Feathers. So um, I decided to have my Northern Lights look pretty blue and greenish because those are my favorite colors and it was pretty simple. If you wanted to, you could add uh, purples and pinks or maybe oranges and um, yellows, but just be careful if you're trying, if you're adding more colors that aren't in the same color group, like if you wanted to add uh, let's say yellows and oranges to this project right here, then um, you just have to worry or, or uh, kind of pay attention to how much water there is and how the colors are blending together because if there's too much water and you're adding colors too quickly, sometimes the colors will get kind of muddied up. So, you know, just have to be attentive, I guess, to that. Um, so I decided to that the top of my... Um, my chipped sapphire top got pretty watered out, so I decided to go in and add some more chipped sapphire, and I uh, held up my watercolor cardstock the other way. I lifted it up um, 
the opposite direction so that the chipped sapphire could kind of sink down into the, the lighter blues and the greens. Um, so I just kind of keep pushing things around. <laughs> um, so once I have the colors to where I think I like them, I decided to heat set them, or just heat set that cardstock. And then because I could, basically, I decided to go in and add some more color. Um, and yeah, so you, uh, another thing you have to be careful of when you're watercoloring is if you're adding too much watercolor and too much paint all the time, um, depending on the quality of your cardstock, the paper may start to kind of peel up. So to kind of help prevent that a little bit, that's why I like to heat set in between. Um, and also, you can tell with some of the paint that I just added, there's kind of harsher marks around the, the, the little spots of paint I added. Um, and then I immediately dried it. So that's another thing that you can play around with, um, the effects that you want to get. If you add some water, um, not too much water, because if you add a lot, it'll be hard to dry. But if you add some water and then some paint and then you immediately try heat setting it, you'll kind of get more harsh lines. And that can kind of, um, if you want, that can uh, be a, kind of a cool look. So anyway, I decided that I was finally gonna stop fiddling with my cardstock, um, at least with watercolor. And I still wanted the top to be a little bit darker, so I blended in some more chipped sapphire. Um, I cut a part of that section off because I wanted to try one more quick little experiment. Um, I decided to add just water to this little section and then heat set it real quick so I could get some more of those harsh lines. Um, and then when I added water, it kind of washed out some of the colors, so I had to add in more color. Um, but I just cut off this little section because I didn't want to have to do that entire piece again. So um, let's say you did the you kind of set the groundwork for an entire long piece like I initially did, and then you wanted to try experimenting with purples and blues. You could kind of cut it up into sections and do that if you wanted to. Anyway, so with this piece, I figured I probably should stop fiddling around with stuff. Um, <laughs> and uh, then I completely um, heat set this one as well as the uh, original piece. Now I want to add some stars, so I'm going to use some uh, Hero Arts Unicorn Spray and I'm just going to use my finger to kind of splash it everywhere. I don't like to use the actual spray nozzle because then um, it's some more even coverage. I like to actually just flick it down with my finger. So depending on how much paint you have on um, the edge of that, of the nozzle I guess, or maybe not the nozzle, whatever that little plastic straw thing is. Depending on how much paint you have on there, um, you'll get bigger or smaller paint blobs. I find that the less paint I have on there, the smaller little dots I get, which is what I like. Um, you can see that when I got some of the bigger blobs, I just used a paper towel to kind of blot it away because, I don't know, is this, those stars were too big. <laughs> um, so one thing to keep in mind when you're adding the unicorn ink is to completely heat set your watercolor before this because if you don't have it completely heat set and you add the unicorn ink, I find that a lot of times the white will kind of fade a little bit into the cardstock because it's still a little bit damp. So that's why I like to have it completely heat set. Now, um, the unicorn ink will take forever to dry um, and I'm a very impatient person um, in particular in certain aspects. Um, at, at least when it comes to waiting for things to dry. I, I want the things to be ready now. So instead of waiting for it to dry, um, I technically I could heat set it, but I find that that also a lot of times kind of dulls the white. Um, I decided to add some clear sparkle embossing powder, and that way I could get some sparkle on the cardstock, and I can also heat set that paint and it won't um, fade. So the top of my cardstock there though, where I end where I added the, uh, where I blended some more uh, distress ink in, I hadn't heat set after I added my uh, my distress ink at the top. So um, more of the sparkle powder is kind of sticking up there, and um, because it's because it's clear, it's not going to be super obvious. But I didn't want it to be very blobby, so I just used a really cheapy paintbrush to kind of dab that away. So now that we've got our backgrounds made, um, I'm going to heat set those backgrounds. <laughs> I didn't show that on camera, but 
Um, now that the backgrounds are made, we're going to go ahead and do the foreground. So the foreground for each card is, it's actually, it's just the same except I use a different animal in each one. So um, what I do is I have a piece of Hero Arts black cardstock, and I particularly like using the Hero Arts black cardstock for this um, card set because it's not like super black. I mean, it's black, but it's not super black. So when I add my black embossing powder on the top, they're going to be pretty distinctive. Um, if you have really, really black cardstock and then you add your black embossing powder on, it might be a little difficult to um, see the difference. So I wanted to make that pretty obvious, which is why I like using the Hero Arts black cardstock. Um, so the stamps that I'm using, um, the animals are all from the Winter Animals uh, set by Hero Arts. Um, all the stamps are by Hero Arts. And uh, the trees are from, I think it's Wintertime Fun, or maybe it's Winter Silhouettes. And in either case, I will have it, um, I'll have the supplies linked to my blog, and I'll have them listed on the YouTube um, description. So once I have those stamped in Versamark, um, I'm going to go and add the uh, black ultra fine embossing powder. And let me warn you, this stuff is like, it's like glitter in that it will stick anywhere and everywhere. So really make sure that you heat prep or uh, uh, prep your cardstock with some anti-static powder. And um, I like to be really careful, uh, especially when I'm like covering the cardstock and putting the extra embossing powder back into the bottle. I'm, I'm really careful about doing it because this this black embossing powder will try to stick anywhere it can. I mean, I'm usually kind of like, uh, quick and easy does it with me with embossing powders. I'm, I guess I'm a little bit sloppy. I don't care about getting every last gram back into the bottle, but with this black powder, I'm careful. <laughs> this stuff will get everywhere. Um, so once I have that heat set, I'm going to add some more anti-static powder on this because I want to heat emboss this sentiment from, I think it's Wonderful Stampin' Cut. Um, I want to heat emboss this in white. So I'm going to stamp my Wonderful, and then I'm going to stamp Wada and World, and I'm sorry. It's really hard to align things on camera without my head being in the way, um, and some people have commented that they don't like my head being in the way, so I kind of had to pull a little bit off camera just to align it. But that's all I'm doing. I'm just aligning it to try to make sure that my words are straight. There's nothing else funky going on there. So I'm going to heat set that, and then I'm going to um, cut around the top of the trees and into the, um, the reindeer. There are coordinating dies for all these stamps that I used, so if you wanted to, you could use partial die cutting if you wanted like really crisp lines, but I was way too lazy to do that. I just decided to hand cut it. Um, so uh, with the foreground already and good to go, um, now we just need to make, I don't know what the specific term, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to call it the middle ground. Um, I want something to be in between the foreground and the background, um, something that will kind of make the foreground a little more distinct. So um, I'm going to be using this little tree die to um, cut this line of trees. And the really nice thing about this tree die is it doesn't, um, it cuts the trees on the top and the side, but it doesn't cut the bottom. So um, you can make the height of your trees like really short or really tall, basically however you need it. Um, and you can even extend the tree line using partial die cutting if you wanted to. Um, however, uh, I just needed to cut a line of trees real quick. So um, I did that. And I want this, this tree line to be distinctive from uh, the foreground and the background, like I mentioned. Um, so I'm going to cover it with Versamark, and then I'm going to heat emboss it with more of that um, black uh, embossing powder. And that will, keep, um, that will be in keeping with the foreground, with the shininess from the, you know, the, the deer and the trees. Um, and it will also make that tree line kind of more distinctive and really help distinguish um, the foreground, the middle ground, <laughs> and then the background. So um, once I have that heat set, uh, the, basically the last thing that we need to do for this card is just trim everything down and then adhere it to the card base. So I trimmed it, I trimmed everything down, added it to my card bases, and here's the finished card. Um, these are two more cards that are just the same except um, different animals. Um, 
And this one with the fox, though, the background is slightly different. This is the first background that I had made. Um, and you can see the lines are a little bit harsher. And that's because when I added water to this, um, I used my heat gun to heat set that. So I had that kind of harsh line. So depending on how you want your northern lights to look, you can, you know, just play around with water, play around with heat setting, um, with the inks that you add. So um, you can really make it look totally different. Um, you can use a star background to like cut out stars and add that to it if you wanted. Um, but that's a really fun thing about um, just this, I guess, card set and the Northern Lights. They're pretty flexible. You don't have to be an amazing watercolorist um, to get a quasi Northern Lights looking uh, background. So those are the cards and if you have any questions or comments you can leave them on my blog, you can leave them on the YouTube comment section. This video is a little bit longer than I usually do, um, but I asked for some feedback on my Instagram and a lot of people said that they don't mind longer videos. If um, they already know the techniques, they can always just skip it or they can put the speed at double time. Um, but a lot of people said they, they liked, they enjoyed watching longer videos. Um, so they have the ability to skip around if they want to or if they just want to kind of, you know, relax or see if there's any tips um, or weird things that <laughs> the, the artist is doing. So I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching. Have a great day. God bless. Bye.